Now in its 10th year, this is GabNet. Talk like you've never heard it before. And this is the Ramble. Ladies and gentlemen, there she is, Lori Thompson. We go down to Florida and Lori Thompson, who you can tell it's a, another week because she has you have a different blouse on uh, today? I have a different shirt. A yes. Different shirt. Okay. I'm, I'm fond of the green blue family. All you have to do if you want to know what your colors are, you don't have to have them done. Yeah. Just look at shirts you really like when they're in the washer. But, but the truth like, is, we do this, two of these, at the same time. We do. And yes. you go out, much to your femininity, and are <laughs> compelled to change your, your, your top or something to make it look like not like it was last week. Sometimes How, I put however, on However, nobody stuff. remembers what you were wearing last week. I know. Sometimes, though, if you're streaming, you'll go, oh, you know, you, you just like to have, you like to respect the folks, respect the audience, and by giving them a variety of colors, everybody's so, got a favorite. Something I got used to, you know, I, I, it, when I started, first started doing a lot of TV, uh, yeah. I would go out to you do did something. You a lot. Uh, yeah. And, uh, more than I ever believed I did. But, you know, because I was a radio guy, and I didn't think I was a TV guy. But the fact was, I did a lot of TV, you know. A bunch. You know, yeah. I was on uh, Comedy Tonight for five years. And uh, and that uh, was nationally syndicated, wasn't it? And then it? I did a thing over Channel uh, 7, which was Log On TV. That's what I won the Emmy for. Uh -huh. I won another Emmy for doing the Beta Breakers uh, wrap-up show. Yeah. Uh, 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 you know, so I mean, really, um, I, I have two Emmys. And so yeah, I, I, did do, I did do a lot of TV. Let me turn up the air conditioner here. It's hot today. Anyway. And, and how many people do you know that have two Emmys? None. Most people, know. Uh, I, nobody. Yeah, I, uh, I know some people have one Emmy, but I have two Emmys. But anyway. That's right. Those. And, uh, and I'm Emmy winning Emmy winning podcaster Alex Bennett. Anyway, <laughs> that's good. Yeah, that's you know, good. The, the Emmy is kind of status, but then when you say podcaster, it just completely negates the Emmy. So, well, there are some great podcasts out there. I'm including this one, but well, this, and is, this isn't one of them. Believe me. <laughs> no, but people, well, um, or you know, others where people just think all you got to do is get a microphone and bring your best friend over and talk about free. Everybody's got a podcast. They do. They're yeah. like navels. Mm -hmm. and, but you know what I was thinking of doing? You know, they do these mystery podcasts, you know. Oh, like serial? Oh, yeah, yeah. Like yeah. And there's this murder, and this happened in, in uh, uh, oh, I don't know, someplace or whatever, and we're trying to figure out who the murderer was, and they carry you along for I don't know how many weeks. Um, well, I thought of just completely creating a fictitious murder, murder case. <laughs> yeah, that would work. Completely fictitious, but just bloody and scary and, and you know, salacious. Salacious, Man. yeah, all of that. But uh, you know, I'm I'm at, I'm at my age where I I don't have the energy to do that, so I probably will never get around to it. You know. But it would be fun. Yeah, yeah. It, yeah. Because I, I now get to a point where I'm saying something and I forget, you know, the name of somebody or the places mm -hmm. or things and whatever. And I now call that my Biden moment. <laughs> oh, man, I was so sad in that, that debate. I mean, just because it seemed, I, I think Biden doesn't have a, a very strong, if any, attack gene. And <laughs> Trump has like the... Super. All attack. of his genes are attack genes. Yes. <laughs> and the <laughs> other, the other, the other genes he, he uses less, but he uses them all the time are the denial genes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's come to his. He, he's yeah. a favorite. I, I never had sex with any porn star. What? Then what did you pay one hundred and thirty thousand dollars for to keep her mouth shut? 
And she hasn't, which is By great. By the way, the only porn star was ever paid to keep her mouth shut. So it's, yeah. you know. <laughs> but Stormy Daniels is fun on interview shows. Yeah. She's, I mean, she's got a sense of humor about herself, about that incident. I mean, and I just, I think she, if he had to do that with any porn star, I think Stormy was a good choice. Yeah. She was she's yeah. entertaining. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Although she, I would not want to have sex with her. She's just not my type. She, not my type either. Not mine. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, yeah, I like her on on talk shows. Yeah, she's she she's fun. Yeah. You know, she can write. She is fun. Mm-hmm. But anyway, so um, um, what was I saying? Um, we were talking about um, Donald Trump and and the Biden and the debate. Oh, the Biden and the and the debate. It's, it's long gone by the time we do this. In fact. By the time we do this, who who knows whether Biden is even running for president again? You know. I know. You know who would be a good candidate in his place? Michelle Obama. I mean, we're doing look- this on July 3rd, so this will be a week from July 3rd that this will be on. A lot can change in a week. You a know? lot. Because when you think about Michelle Obama, whose name is, you know, floating around, um, and you think about you get a two for one. Basically, it's a BOGO. You get Barack Obama in the White House again, and Michelle Obama, and they have their marriage seems constructed to uh, make basically. I don't think a, I, I don't think she wants to be president. I, oh, I, I don't, don't think, think that's not in her. It's not in her genes. It's not in her DNA. You know, it, it, it's just not what yeah. she wants to do with her life. You know, I'm I'm uh, thinking she would be a good choice though, as far as vote getting. Yeah. Um, my choice, the guy. I, I, I'm thinking who can win. Yeah, okay. yeah. Who can That's win? What I'm... Who can jump in at a moment's notice, take this thing over, and then move on and win? And while he's at it along the way in debates, make mincemeat out of Donald Trump, and that would be Gavin Newsom. Gavin Newsom will be president, probably in our lifetime. You know, he's got charisma. He's a good looking guy. He's quite Kennedy esque. And he's just, he's already been governor of California and mayor of San Francisco. He knows how to deal with people and politics. And plus, he presents so well. Yeah. And he has some, he has some problems, but they don't, they're not akin to cheating on your wife with a porn star. Right. He cheated on his wife with somebody he worked with when he was mayor of San Francisco. Mm-hmm. And uh, that didn't end well for his marriage. Okay, <laughs> they it, seldom do. It was, I think, his best friend's wife or something that he was Ouch. having sex with. Ouch! Because yeah. see, that's a. I, I would. Uh, it, I rumors would, that he, rumors that he and Kamala. Really? Uh, well, well he, that, she was she was the uh, district attorney when he was go, uh, mayor. It makes complete sense because, see, I would run into them before he was mayor. I would run into him socially quite a bit. And I did some events for Jackie Spear, mm-hmm. you know, who's uh, re- who was a representative. At the time, she was coming up. Right. She wasn't right. representing California. But uh, she w- and so I would run into them and Willie Brown and Kamala Harris um, was uh, very nurtured. I'm just saying nurtured by Willie Brown, who was kind of a legend in San Francisco. So uh, there yeah. are rumors about that, but yeah, but uh, Gavin Newsom would be great. Oh and yeah, he will uh, be Gavin, Gavin Newsom. The reason it is that Gavin Newsom, it, somebody who was it, um, the mouth from the south. I'm trying to remember his name. Uh, I always keep forgetting. Uh, Herman? Huh? No, I was just the trying guy to think who of was the, he, he was the uh, the guy who worked with uh, with uh, uh, Bill Clinton. You know, and, and oh, uh, James Carville. James Carville. He said that anybody who run can would run against Trump, who was perceptively younger, mm-hmm. okay, could win without even thinking about it. Well, I think so, and just uh, a sense of humor. Because I mean, I told you about that time that I got to like shadow and hang out with um, Newt Gingrich and Donald Trump before he was even a dark horse in the presidential yeah. race. This was in Iowa. Newt, and there was a piece there, of work. Oh, there was a piece of work, Newt Gingrich? Yeah. Yeah, he was, but they were funny. And that's why I hung around uh, he, Newt, The Newt Gingrich I interviewed had no sense of humor. Oh, really, really, really? Now, this, yeah, I don't well, think- Well, here's, he here's how I got Newt Gingrich. Publicly. I interviewed him and I was very 
seems good to him, okay? Didn't, didn't yeah. make him feel uncomfortable or anything like that because I said to myself, I want him to come back because yeah. that's when I'll nail him. <laughs> you were baiting the hook. Yeah, <laughs> and my opportunity came because a couple of months later, Newt Gingrich, I think, in fact, asked to be on my show because I was so nice to him. Right? That's right. Kinder, gentler, Alex. So we're doing the interview, and I go, um, Newt, are you a church-going guy? He said, oh, yes, I go to church every Sunday. I believe in, in God, and I, I go to church, and I support my church, and so on. I said, yeah. I said, when do you have time to go? I says, because I see on all those shows on Sunday. Sunday morning, meet the press. And meet the mm -hmm. press and so on. And it doesn't look like, you know, you're a church. He says, well, I go before that. I said, <laughs> well, I went back in let me just say that doing the interview on the Lord's Day is against the Lord. Well, if you're Amish. Uh, or yeah. <laughs> it's just, you know, if you're real religious, you don't do interviews. What's his name? You know the guy who's got the best ability at going on talk shows is what's his name our uh, our speaker of the senate uh, the head of the senate uh, <laughs> no i'm after my Pelosi, mind, mind. my mind's uh, anyway he's jewish <laughs> so he can do all the sunday shows I, that's right <laughs> yes, oh my gosh he can do all this that. he's always available for the sunday shows <laughs> Yeah, because, um, well, plus with recording them now, you know, everything is recorded. Schumer, Chuck Schumer. I, you know how I yeah. had to think of his name? I had to remember Amy Schumer, which was easier yeah. than Chuck Schumer. All those new, what are they, all those techniques, those memory techniques. Yeah. Because yeah. mine used to be, during a conversation or an interview, I would have like a mental pegboard where I would put file cards. Like, you know, when a topic was mentioned, maybe we transitioned naturally into mm -hmm. something else, but I would still have that file card if it came time for a callback. So, you know, you know and you so know, I... Uh, lately, I mean, it's happened. I've started, it, my memory starts failing me. Mm -hmm. And um, I tried to figure out why, at my age, your memory starts to fail you. And I saw some interviews about that. And one of the things is, and this, you may not realize this, your brain really takes, it just it, it absorbs massive amounts of information through your lifetime. Oh, yeah. By the time you reach my age, it's reached its limit. <laughs> and so what it's no doing you no know, what it's doing to make room for the new information is it's tossing out old information. Yeah. I can believe that. You know, and that's the reason why as you when you get to be my age, you get forgetful. It has nothing to do with the fact you got Alzheimer's or anything like that. It's just your brain has filled the capacity. Yeah, well, they should make storage lockers for brains. For brain. See? <laughs> yeah, for brain cells. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> storage lockers are everywhere. But or like I, uh, like an external hard drive that you might buy for extra memory yeah. in your computer. You should be able to have an external set of brain cells so you know, that you just plug it. into your brain, and all of a sudden you remember everything. And I wonder about foods that we eat because I researched this some and herbs that you can take, like um, ginkgo biloba. I take that because it's supposed to be, um, well, I was experiencing tinnitus, which is not, not exactly an ear thing, it's usually a brain thing. Is it really? And, I yeah. thought it was an ear thing. And I've had several concussions in my life, either yeah. because I'm <laughs> just klutzy or whatever, we, but uh, really badly, really badly. And it doesn't interfere with hearing. I could hear everything being said very, very uh, succinctly, but I could, could not turn off this ringing. And so I read that that works, and it does. I sound. think that's it, what Huey Lewis has, but very bad form of it. Very where he bad. He cannot yeah. sing anymore because he can't take the the pressure of the music and everything like that. Yeah. Yeah, and Bon Jovi. Bon Jovi's also eased off because he was having voice problems, and there are these, um, you know, polyps on the vocal cords. We all know about that. Yeah. There's so many other things that can happen to the vocal cords. And like that's why a lot of voices, mine included, have deepened over the years. Well, people people get polyps because they're not using their throat properly. Mm -hmm. uh, when I learned how to uh, how to 
how to be an announcer and to get my mm -hmm. voice into a decent range. Because when I was a kid, you know, I was... Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Makes you sound more authoritative. Somebody told me, put your hand on your chest. Mm -hmm. And if you don't feel it vibrating, you're not doing it right. Okay, that's because an easy one. Because what you're doing is you're talking from up here. You're Instead not talking here. from here. All right? right. So yeah. uh, what you do is he said, put your hand on your chest and then deepen your voice enough that you feel your chest vibrating. Well, like I'm talking now and I feel my chest vibrating. Yeah. But if I talk way up here, I don't feel it vibrating. <laughs> so that's how, what, I, what I learned to do. And, and that, was, that was the way I, I uh, used my voice all my life. I've always talked from down here. Well, if you talk from down here rather than from up here, you're not going to get nodules. Right. And well, and I took singing lessons and, and they had that same premise. It was for singing. Didn't work. I'm an alto. Will always be an alto, and, or maybe a contralto. But uh, yeah, and there was a lot of emphasis on breathing. Which probably came in handy as you know when I got into radio, but it was as a teenager, and yeah. there are a lot of, and so and people always tell you when you have a sore throat, gargle with salt water. Well, salt that will scar, that will scar your throat a bit, and so I don't gar gargle with salt water. I do gargle with plain water quite a bit, just to kind of get things, keep things relaxed. With there. what? Plain water. Oh, plain water. Yeah. Yeah, not carbonated. Yeah, just plain water, just to keep. Just to get the gunk out of your throat, yeah. and then it seems to help some. Yeah, uh, but I, I, you know, I've never cared that much about how my voice sounds, but I don't. I think it sounds about the same as it always has, doesn't it? It, I, it doesn't I think sound so. Poor, could, it doesn't sound like I have an old, older voice. No, it is not at all. Yeah, I mean, I could recognize it from the moon. Yeah. Yeah, you could recognize it from the moon. <laughs> yeah, I could hear it from the moon. I can hear it but, from uh, the moon. Shirley Jones, if you want to. If you want an example of voices that have completely changed over the years, listen to her in Oklahoma and listen to her speak now, like on an interview show. It's amazing how her voice is deepened. Yeah, but, these, but how about when can she still sing? I don't think so. No, she she remarked that she doesn't. You know, it really is disappointing when you hear about people whose voices were incredible. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden, one day, something happens, and they can't sing anymore. I, I saw an interview today with Linda Ronstadt. Oh, man, well, she has. That is, is so, it, 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 it's so sad Yeah. because there was nobody better. I mean, she was incredible. She, yeah. She had a and great Plus, she was voice. an icon a teen, for teenage girls. Well, I had a thing for her. You did. You and she did yet. my show once in, in New York. And I was just, it was almost like I couldn't do the interview. I was so gobsmacked by her presence. Okay. She was beautiful. Now was beautiful. I'm at a demonstration in Washington, D.C. Thousands of people. I'm backstage. And from across the room, I hear somebody yell at me, Alex! And I turn around, and it's Linda. Were you just absolutely I just jazzed? Was, Linda, what? Linda, Linda said hello to me. <laughs> you know, <I> was like, <laughs> My name. <laughs> I mean, hello, she Alex. was at that time, and she still is actually, one of the most gorgeous women ever. Yeah, she with those those brown eyes, and she um, was on the cover of Rolling Stone, and she in the interview she talked about buying fry boots, and she said she loved how her toes looked. In fry boots. So what did I buy? <laughs> Almost immediately. Fry boots. Fry boots. Yeah. I'll tell you what. I, um, um, uh, you know, I. Uh, what was I going to say now? You're talking hmm. about Linda, and you saw her backstage, and she was, she was a beauty. Uh, oh yeah, Stunning. yeah. But oh, I know what I was going to say. So I was looking through videos that I have because I'm sorting them out and putting them mm -hmm. up online and so on, up on Roku, and one of the ones I came across was us doing a radio show from a ski lodge. Do you remember that? Oh, I'm, trying, I'm trying to think where it would have been. And I think... Oh, we, we did some things in Tahoe. We did some well, things in Tahoe. Uh, near Tahoe, but it was a, yeah. it was a, a, a ski resort. Yeah. And it was the first time murder. I actually have a video of the only time I've ever been on skis. <laughs> that was the first and last time I've ever been on skis.
Well, you're probably more of a snowboarder. But you're yeah. there. You're there, uh, right? Yeah. And uh, uh, Christy's there. Yeah, that was strong. I looked, we did a I looked at her and I just said, God, you want to talk about gorgeous? She was. She and Linda Ronstadt had a similar look. You know, kind of, kind of dark, a little bit of a touch of color in their complexion, and the brunette hair and those piercing eyes. But which good, just you know what it was? Eye. It was good looks without being overbearing with the good looks. They were yeah, just. Yeah, she didn't have they, they were vanity. Just, was not her thing. No, but it was just. It just. It wafted over her. You know. Yeah. It wasn't like she Warm. tried it or anything else. Yeah, and, and when you get someone who you meet and they haven't relied on their looks to get them where they are, you can just tell it. You can yeah. tell it in every conversation. You can tell it in every mannerism. It's just, and she was a bad ill. She didn't let it, anything but her looks go to her head at all. Yeah, and yeah. She was, uh, she was, uh, but I, I looked at that and I went, wow, you know, she was gorgeous. And you didn't look bad yourself, my dear, but it was so well, dark I couldn't see that much of you. Thank you, darling. Yeah, and I Dana remember Gould going was long. there, and Bob Rubin was there. Yeah. And uh, they took a what a, a snow sled, snow what do they call snowmobile? Sleigh. Yeah. Sleigh. And then they uh -huh. crashed the thing. Remember, they <laughs> fell off of it, and it just went and got, went into a snow drift. With Rube's, uh, Rube at the reins, why am I not um, <laughs> surprised or shocked by this information? I don't know why we ever thought it was a good idea to do a show from a ski lodge. I know, exactly. There was a murder mystery dinner that was tied in with the package, and we hosted the murder mystery dinner. Did we really? We did, yeah. I don't I remember, remember that. Oh, yeah. yeah did I fun. show up? You, you did. In fact, you did it. <laughs> but um, that was fun. Um, but I remember we had gotten there a couple days earlier, and we'd skied, and we, you know, I mean, and I was exhausted at that day. Are you skied? You were a skier? I skied. Um, I, I was frustrated at the beginning when I started skiing mm -hmm. because I was trying too hard. And you don't have to try. But by the time we went there, were you a skier? Yes, because I, I finally realized the way to ski and enjoy it is completely relaxed. Just relax, go downhill and hit a tree. Yeah, exactly. Especially playing football, ski football. Or is this the, better known as it's better known as a sunny bono? <laughs> oh, did you know for a Halloween party right after that happened? My boyfriend and I at the time went as Sunny and Cher, and he just got a Christmas tree and cut it in half. And, and got and balanced the front on his front and then the back coming out the back and I of course had to share with yeah yeah, yeah. and it was so fun <laughs> oh boy yeah well. but yeah because it was yeah I mean, you've got to make sure with those things that enough time has passed yeah, anyway, we're not we're not dropping and, and got, names here folks but the, the fact is the only reason we went into the, the radio was out because of all the excuses I, we had to meet great people Right, exactly. Not necessarily famous people. Even. Those aren't the ones I remember the most. Um, but my sister one time, after I'd been in radio with you for mm -hmm. several years, and we met so many people, and she was in a situation where I was in a, we were in a conversation at a large round table, and I was talking, and she said, you know, if I didn't know you, uh, and know you actually met all these people, I think you were just a big name dropper. So whenever we would be at a function after that, if I, I started doing that and didn't realize it, she would just softly hum, raindrops keep falling on, name drops keep falling on yeah. my head. By the way, by the way, quickly, uh, we lost uh, Kinky Friedman. You remember Kinky? I know. That was so bizarre because my friend in St. Louis and I who talk about music all the time, we went to see Little Feet when we were there. Um, yeah, he, we were talking about him, like, you know, he was a good satirical songwriter. Mm -hmm. And it was like, is he dead or is he alive? He has to be in- He ran for months. governor of Texas. Did he really? Yeah. yeah. Wow, and you know, just as a disruptor or just- As a fun. disruptor, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, but he, he was really, I like Kinky, he was a good guy. He was a good guy. Yeah, in that same vein, but I think more melodic uh, and more, Sentimental. I love Lyle. Love it. And when we went to see Kinky or uh, Little Feet, 
the next night, Lyle Lovett was playing, and I was like, oh, oh. man, if I had my choice. But I like Lyle Lovett. Good. He was good, too. But, you she's know. no lady. She's my I wife. I mean, I lost somebody I, else that I kind of knew, but I, on a very peripheral way, but, you know, they're all dying around me. Yeah. I know, that's why, and when people are dying and they're your age, you know, um, that's like, oh, oh. <laughs> but they always use, a, thankfully, they always use a picture that was taken of the person in their 20s. Yeah. You know, so we don't have to deal with that aspect of our own aging. Well, there were enough dying when I was a decent age, like Bill Hicks and so on. But now yeah. I have other people I knew, like Bob Saget and so on, die. It just, yeah. it, it just it gets to me, you know, starting yeah. to, Starting to eat me up. Yeah. Eat me alive. Eat me from the inside. Hey, listen, but, we've run out of time. Do you realize that? Well, it, it flies when you're having it, fun. It, well, I mean, it, it, these these uh, little things we do here uh, are very simple and easy, and I thank you so much for doing them with me. Oh, Ben, it's such a pleasure. I look forward to it so every time. Yes. And, uh, and uh, so, uh, what? You were going to Don't say blow something? yourself up with like a Roman candle or anything oh. over you know this this holiday. Yeah, well, we're, we're the holidays passed. That was last okay. week. Okay, well, last week was Fourth of July. Tomorrow is Fourth of July for us. But, but I'm that's, so that's happy kind of how these didn't... things are done, and we yeah. have just broken the magic. Okay. Well, um, see, uh, maybe I'll just change my tense and say I'm so happy you didn't die in a grizzly. Fourth of July accident because okay. fourth just passed. And it's okay. a pleasure that I didn't. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Laurie Thompson. Thank you, Laurie. Farewell, my bye. 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 Now in its tenth year, this is Gadnet talk like you've never heard it before. Well, hello to all of you. What happened there? <laughs> Look at me. I've got that's my green background. I don't. I need. Uh, what? What the hell? God, nothing ever goes right here. Let me turn on the lights here. Okay. Now, let me go to, uh, where is it? Uh, this is the camera. And then I've got to go here to uh, Alex's camera. And then I go to filters. And then I go to chroma key. And then I do this. And that should, uh, that should do it okay, right? 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 Yeah. Jeez almighty. I don't know. I don't check these things out early or ahead of time, so I don't really get it down fine. Okay, I should check them ahead of time. Uh, there's nobody here except one person is waiting to come on. What is it? I go off for a couple of days, and uh, what happens? You know? So let me see here. Uh, I'm looking to see over my other monitor here if I finally got the uh, the pictures on right. Oh boy. It's just I mean, for you know what I did? I got a new uh, I got a new board here and it's a uh, pretty good board actually. But it takes so much to get it working just right. And uh, so anyway, I'm trying to figure out if I'm getting it to work out just right and uh, We'll see. Let's uh, let me go uh, bring in some of these people here. We have uh, two of them. Are we three now? Okay. All right. Let me um, bring these down here, and here come all the uh, people that I have waiting. And uh, let me also make sure that we uh, do that. There we go. There we go. There is. Um, Charlie Wallace, and there. I'm is, trying. I'm here. Yeah, but I don't see your picture. Uh oh. What do I have to do to get that? I'm do. I'm calling. I'm on my cell phone instead of on uh, at home. Yeah. Oh, there we go. No. Oh, there we go. Uh, okay. Yeah. Now turn your phone sideways. I did. Is that better? No, it doesn't. Doesn't change it. Well, yeah. There you go. No, okay. That's fine. That's good. Okay. I've got to do something else here, too. I have to, um, the other, t earlier today I screwed up my, um, my, um, what do you call it? My Zoom panel here. And I've got to, uh, I've got to bring it up now. Here, wait a minute. 
How, what, is, what is the problem? I have no idea. Hmm. Zoom panel. And um, let me see here. The Zoom panel. Ooh, Hold on a second. Window capture. And then I got to do this and bring this maybe up a little bit. What does that do? Okay. I'm, I'm not... Uh, you guys talk to each other, okay? <laughs> <laughs> you know? I, I, I'm halfway between Chicago and Austin. Oh, yeah? Yeah. 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 Beautiful downtown Brinkley, Arkansas. My favorite place I've never been to. <laughs> wow. Okay. So anyway, I think... Is that Josh yeah. Wheeler's uh, thing there? Yeah, yeah, there we go. We, we, we almost have it down there. Okay. So yeah. let me just do this up a little more. And we should be okay now. I think... I just want to make sure that all the stuff is right. There we go. Okay. Um, we're set, I think. Let me do this, and we're we're good, ready to go. Hello, uh, to Jeff. How are you? And good. Uh, hello to Josh, and hello to Charlie. Boy, hey, guys. Charlie, where are you that you're using your phone? Yeah, I'm, I'm driving from Austin to Chicago, and I stopped off at Brinkley, Arkansas. Which is about halfway. So, what are you in a motel? Yep, Motel Six. Uh, motel Six. <laughs> oh, lovely. Mm. We'll turn. We'll keep the lights on for you. Mm. So, I'm having a little trouble talking tonight. What happened is, <clears throat> this woman, this dentist, put in oh, this boy. new tooth, right? Mm -hmm. And somehow, it kept biting down on the side of my mouth. You ever have that Ooh. happen? Right. Yeah, especially with a new tooth. Yeah. Well, and I looked at it today, and there's like this little, you know, blood-filled sack in there. You've had that happen too, huh? Well, yeah. Yeah. So, I, you know, I mean, it makes it harder for me to talk. It's ridiculous. But anyway. Well, there we are. There's Brian Neary. Where are you, Brian? Is it better this way? Huh? Yeah. Better this, yeah. Better this yeah, way. Yeah, that's better. What are you doing? Where are you? I'm lying down. Yeah. Where? In my living room. Are you at home? Oh, you're at home. Okay. Oh, you're yeah, at home. because everybody everybody lies down, so I'm lying down. Too. <laughs> oh, oh well, just a second. I'll move to the I'll, I'll start lying down, too. Yeah. yeah, there we go. Yeah. Listen, I want to test something out. You know how I say you can never hear the theme song when we play it at the end of the show? Yeah. I'm yeah. going to play it for you now, and I want to see if you can hear it, because I think I found the problem. And was able to solve it. Tell me if, if you can hear this. I'm going to turn on my mic down quite a bit here so that it doesn't. Yeah, I can hear it. Okay. The reason I finally figured it out, the reason why is that there's a thing on uh, Zoom that you go to for the sound that says, for musicians, click oh. here. And you play that, and then it plays all the music. Wow. And that's how I that's how I solve the problem. Wow. So you guys can now hear something if I play it. Yeah. Great. Mm -hmm. Anyway. So um uh, uh let's see here. We had uh, I had two days off. Mm -hmm. well, I think I could stand to have another two days off. You know. Right. Feels like we've been gone for like a week or two. Yeah, yeah, we've been gone for. Uh, well, we've been gone for, uh, a week ago. This was our last show for the week, but then yeah. I did Monday. Mm -hmm. did the Monday show, so you know, I had to work. You had to work. Mm. Gotta make money, yes. Mm. Anyway, so I'm having a hard time talking with this thing back here. It's just. But you know what I'm talking about, Charlie. You've had them, huh? Yeah. Well, I've got to go to that dentist, but she's all the way up in Scarsdale, and she isn't oh. opening up her new office until August, and I don't want to have to drive, take a cab all the way up there 
uh, to have her just do whatever she's got to do here. But if it gets any worse, I'm going to have to, you know. Mm -hmm. But apparently, uh, you know, if I've, when it was bothering me, I could have gone see her, but I didn't, it didn't think it was that bad. And it's just gotten horrible, gotten ridiculous. So, uh, you know. Uh, you which, just have to learn to bite again. Learn how to bite again. Well, no, I can learn how to have her uh, smooth it down <laughs> yeah. and move it around a little bit and do whatever she yeah. can do to make it avoid biting that particular area. But, you know, I found that when I was eating some food or something and food would get back there, then it would I'd bite down and, boy, you know. I'd, yeah. So. Uh, and the other thing that worried me about it is one of the things about uh, leukemia is mouth sores. And, um, but this isn't that. This is being caused by something I can identify. So, did they test your your tongue? Huh? Or your, oh, sometimes it's it, uh, right in front here too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh well, uh, fuck it. You know. Uh, but anyway, um, I got a letter from a friend of mine who thought for the last year and a half he had uh, Parkinson's. Because the doctors said, you have Parkinson's. <clears throat> well, he started doing a lot of reading on Parkinson's and the problems with Parkinson's and how you get Parkinson's and, you know, what the, uh, what the problems are with it. And one of the things he saw was that certain drugs mimic Parkinson's. And he found out that one of the drugs he was taking was one of the drugs that mimicked Parkinson's. Wow. But he got to learn a lot about Parkinson's. And what he wrote me to say was, what he thinks is wrong with Joe Biden is he has Parkinson's. That it's, it's all the, all the um, uh, symptoms of Parkinson's. First is denial. You deny that you even have it. You know, oh, I can't have that. I'll be able to survive this. And then it starts getting worse, and it affects your ability to speak and do a lot of different things. And what he was describing was exactly what's wrong with Joe Biden right now, or what we perceive to be wrong with him. And uh, now it turns out that he's had a, they've had a specialist come to the White House at least eight times in the last eight months to check him out for Parkinson's. So I'm beginning to think what well, Biden's that's got not, is Parkinson's. That's not really accurate. What? He wasn't there to check Biden out to see if he had Parkinson's. That's one of the personal physicians that has served the presidency, not just this president, the presidency since 2012. And he happens to be an expert in Parkinson's. And he also happens to serve the staff that works at the White House, including the huge military staff that works in the White House. Yeah, He's I know that. All yeah, of them. yeah, I know that. So the fact that he's been to the White House 500 times in a year has nothing to do with anything. That's where he works, basically. But you don't think he was there to see him, too? Well, they've said that he's examined the president. He's the, the president's main personal physician in, in this particular president. They bounce him around a little bit, <laughs> you know. So, I mean, it, it doesn't... <laughs> I'm just saying it doesn't mean that that's what he's for. I mean, you know, you may go see a doctor that can examine you for something that's not necessarily the exact thing that they do in their field, but, you know, they're mm -hmm. capable of doing other things. I mean, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, that, that happens a lot. So especially in a place like that where, you know, they have a staff that takes care of so many people. Mm -hmm. So... You know, I mean, the one thing, for one, even if he does, it doesn't change anything. I don't really know what it matters, and I don't particularly like all the people who are watching and just, oh, this, I know what he's got, because I've seen, I mean, it's this, this this is like, this Wikipedia diagnosis is not very good for anybody. <laughs> yeah. It doesn't make any sense, and it doesn't matter. I mean, I, I will say that they've they've said openly and emphatically he does not have Parkinson's. He was never diagnosed with it. He ha does not have it. He takes no medication for it. I mean, they've said that from the mm -hmm. press room pulpit 
emphatically, you hardly ever get a real answer from a politician or a press secretary, but on this one, they gave an emphatic <clears throat> clear cut no. So if it turns out they lied about that, you know, in a couple of weeks, that would be very, very bad. It would be wrong. And I would have to think that they would know that if they lied, that it would come out and they would get mm -hmm. caught. I mean, yeah. unless they're just incredibly stupid, you know, I can't imagine that they would give the answer that they gave uh, knowing that if they gave it, someone would find out and want to, to have the ultimate gotcha, you know, I mean, so I don't, I don't really think that's the case. I mean, well, I don't think he's doing all that well because of his age and everything. Don't get me wrong. <laughs> I'm not saying that. But I'm just saying, like, you know, I know someone with Parkinson's, you know, and it took them a long time to figure out that they had Parkinson's. I mean, it's, from my understanding from Parkinson's is that, you know, when you go to the doctor with symptoms, it's not as if, oh, you know what, you, let's do this. For, oh, you have Parkinson's. I mean, it usually, from what I've heard, it takes people months, if not longer, to find out finally after they've, it's almost a disease that they get to by, like, ruling everything well, else it's out a disease, way. it's a disease, another one of those diseases, much like my leukemia, that you die with and not from. Yeah. Okay. But if he has I'm not it, sure there, but... You know, if he has it, that impinges on his abilities. I think that what well, the problem we've got right now is a Democratic Party that doesn't know what the goddamn hell to do. You know? They don't know how to handle this situation. I think if Joe Biden cared about the party, cared about the country, he would say, I'm not going to run. And the reason is, is that even though I think I'm entirely capable of doing the job for the next four years, apparently America doesn't think so. And quite frankly, I don't want to run under those conditions. I'm not doing the party any help, and I'm not doing the country any help by, by running again. And he should back off. It would be the nice thing to do. It would be the thing that would solidify Joe Biden's reputation. But if he does, if he, you know, if he runs and then he loses because everybody thinks he's got something wrong with him, and we got Trump for another four years, what's he done for the country? You know, he will die with a with a with a bad legacy. Yeah, but if the party had somebody to run against Biden, wouldn't they have done that already? They do. Kamala to begin with. Uh, and, and I mean, yeah, I don't think they would have ran anyone, even if they really heavily preferred to, because I just think they deferred to a sitting president. I mean, it, it's just not... If a sitting president decide he wants, decides he wants to run for re-election... I mean, he's 99.9, .9, you know, the nominee. Yeah. Well, here's you know, the one, thing. I mean, one of the exceptions might have been LBJ, where a lot of people felt like they would have had the right to have ran because the way that he got into the presidency was right. that he assumed it rather than was elected to it. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. Well, here's the thing, however, that uh, people say, a lot of the Democrats uh, who are for Biden say, well, what you're doing, you're denying the people their right because they voted for him. And they, you know, they gave him these, they gave him these votes for the, for the convention and so on and so forth. But they voted for him not being in full, uh, uh, full. Uh, uh, didn't have full, all the information. They, they didn't have all the information. Right. You know? Plus, there really wasn't anyone else to vote for. I mean... Well, there would have been... Basically unopposed. I there, mean, I understand there were a few other people that said, but there was no... Ser I mean, there was no real challenger to Biden's re-election campaign. You know, I mean, I understand the congressman from Minnesota or whatever w was out there, yeah. but, I mean, it's it's not as if... Oh, you would have had, you would have had though, a whole bunch of people come forward. You would have had, of course, Kamala would, would have thrown his hat in the ring. Right, You right. probably would have had, uh, 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 what's his name out in California? Uh, mm -hmm. Newsom. Know, yes, it Newsom is. Uh, probably put his hat in the ring. I mean, there yeah. would have been a lot of people. Uh, you, yeah, and Gretchen Whitmer of, uh, of uh, 
you know, um, Detroit yeah. of uh, yeah, if, Michigan. If, if Kamala Harris had run and Gavin Newsom had run and somebody else and there had been a debate and all four of those names were on the primary when we went and voted in Ohio and you guys in New York and everyone in Texas, if that were the case and he had won the most votes and nominee, you know, for the nomination, just like before and everything, and they were saying this, it would have real weight. Yeah. But the yeah. like, if that's the only thing they have, you know, whatever. I mean, that's fine. I'm not, but I mean, like, I have heard people say, that, you know, that it's like, it's like taking away the votes of people or whatever. No, it's really not. I mean, <laughs> you know, I mean, it's Biden was the only one on the ballot. Right. In Texas. I mean, it's it's. I mean, and even if that's the case, the situation changed. It, well, it's no different than, oh, I voted for Jim Bob to be the nominee for Democratic president, and in August he died. Well, we can't replace him because that's who everyone voted for. Well, but he's dead. You know. What I mean? Well, <laughs> also, the, it doesn't the, matter. The other argument that drives me crazy is these people who are saying. Well, you know, it's only uh, so many months now till the election. It's only so many months until the uh, a month or so until the uh, convention. Uh, gee, what are we going to do? And and John Stewart the other day said, in France, they just el elected people right. with one month of running, and then mm -hmm. in England they ran it with two months of running. If yeah, we can't do weeks. it in four months, what kind of pussies are we? You know? Yeah. Yeah, because you know, really, the people that are would be in the running are what I would consider known quantities. I mean, mm -hmm. it's not as if someone is going to run that no one has ever heard of, and we need to really learn about this person. Mm -hmm. I mean, come on, you know. I mean, everyone knows who the vice president is. The governor of California is well known. Uh, you know, and so on and, and so forth. I mean, some people don't pay that much attention to politics and things of that nature, and they might not know that much. But that's then, then get informed. Your job as a citizen then would be to be like, okay, I have a decision to make. Everyone yeah. owns one of these computers that has this Google thing or what? Then figure it out. Then sit down for two hours and take a look. You know, I mean, yeah, citizens have responsibilities. You know, but yeah, I don't buy that. I don't buy any of the arguments for the change. You know, I mean, yeah. you know, now if they don't change it because he doesn't want to, then and that's in, and they want to support it, then they can go on with that. But I don't <laughs> buy any of the reasons that they can't change. Period. They're yeah, all. But the, the only thing up. that we've got going here, though, this is the biggest problem, is that he um, uh, he has a, a curse on him at this point. You know, I mean, people are not in feeling good about him. And so because of that, it would be good of him to not run. There are a lot of other people that could run. He's done a service to the country. He only really said when he ran the last time that he was only going to run for that time, yeah. that he was going to be a yeah. bridge candidate. And he's not yeah. living up to that. What it is, people become president, and they don't want to give it up. Right. Yep. You know? They like the big plane. Yeah. So what do we yeah, got? I mean, we got another, you know. Sure. Yeah, I mean, most people don't want to, you know, not run for re-election. I mean, Lyndon Johnson was a, you know, an exception because of, you know, but he got a pretty good bit of time, you know, he was re-elected. He, he got more than four years, you know, so yeah. I, I understood I mean, I guess I can understand, you know, his thinking, but I mean, and in some ways, it's leaning that way for Biden because, you know, Lyndon Johnson's thing was, you know, I just, I'm tired of this. I can't turn on a light switch without talking to somebody about fucking Vietnam. You know, I'm just fucking tired of it. You know, I just want five minutes of peace and quiet without this Vietnam, Vietnam, Vietnam. And he realized he, was, he wasn't going to get it. It was going to be four more years of it. And he just said, I can't, I can't do it. Right. You know, in some ways, I wonder how much Biden is going to sit around and be like, yeah. I literally cannot walk across the fucking room without someone asking me, you know, how I feel today. How are you doing? Are you healthy? I mean, you know, I mean, people get sick and tired of the same thing over and over and over again. So, 
you know, I don't know if it's wearing on him or not, but I mean, I'm just saying, you know, I can understand it. Yeah. It's certainly what drove, you know, Lyndon Johnson to just say, you know what, I don't have the energy to fight this out, you know? And he died in what, 1972 or 73, you know? So he died four or five years later. I mean, it would have yeah. been, you know, he, he was in, you know, not that great a health and he was only in his sixties or, or, you know, so yeah. I, mean, I think he nobody had, had attack been a smoker and a lot of, yeah, right. I mean, he had, you know, a lot of things that were pretty well known, but yeah, I mean, he, you know, people get tired of being, you know, asked the same thing over and over. I would have to think that despite what they're saying, that it's, you know, it's a real issue. I mean, I'm sure that behind the scenes, it's uh, it's tough. I mean, you know, I saw a congressman on TV earlier, the one of the latest ones to come out and say that he wants change. You know, and he, he said, you know, the same thing that I figured, you know, is when they get asked, well, you know, you're the eighth congressman to say this, and there's 200 of you. That's only eight of 200. And he, he's saying, yeah, well, uh, actually, I'm the eighth one to get on CNN and say this. Okay, right. but if you go ask the other 192 in secret ballot, you're probably going to find out that there's fucking zero of them that don't want to make change, you know? Well, you know, I think that anybody can beat Donald Trump except for Joe Biden. That's how I feel right now. I think Kamala can beat him, uh, can beat Donald Trump, given the chance to put herself out there. And for people to get to know her a little better, I think she could win it. I think, of course, Gavin Newsom, I think, could take it in a heartbeat. I think Gretchen Whitmer could take it. They're mm -hmm. all very There's good candidates and very good people to go fight Donald Trump. Uh, but and, and he's probably afraid of every last one of them. But the only one he's not afraid of right now is Joe Biden. Mm -hmm. Would you yeah. disagree with me on that assessment? I will. Tony? Yeah, I don't want to sound like a sexist, Alex, but I do not believe a woman could beat him. Hillary couldn't do it with Bill Clinton behind no, I think I think a woman Nothing. could do it. I, I, don't, I think those days have passed. You know, we got, look at how many con female congresswomen we have now and how many we had 40 years ago. You know, it's, I a whole think different, that, it's a whole different set of politics. I mean, I, I respect your opinion, but I'm telling you, if they serve him Camilla Harris... He will win then. If they give him a man, he will lose. I'm telling you. Uh, I, I I would bet heavy on that. I, I just don't know that that's true anymore. What what do you think, and, uh, yeah. uh, uh, Alan? You had your hand up there. I was just going to go into a little bit about how what Josh was saying about Alzheimer's. It's not an easy diagnosis. you got to become forgetful. You can't find where you're at. You, it's, it's symptoms... They don't just take an x-ray of your brain or a MRI and say, oh, yeah, he's got Alzheimer's. It's not that simple. It's based mm -hmm. on, uh, you know, different things that are going on in his life. And well, we're talking about Parkinson's. You know, what Josh was saying is right. I mean, you know, how can they? And they have some pills, but they don't know right now if the pills help much. They're kind of in, you know, they're used. They're All not I'm saying is, let's say, let's say the only thing wrong with him is just old age. Let's just say that, okay? And yes. he is not able to communicate quite like he used to. That's yeah. not the perception the public has. Right. And it would be better if he didn't run and let somebody else run for the good of the party, for the good of the country, for the to make sure that Donald Trump doesn't become president again. And and uh, yeah. I I think it would be in his, he would be a good guy if he just said look, there's too much of this going against me yeah. now in public perception. I think I can do the job. Uh, I think I'm missing out on a good bet, but I don't know if I can win under these circumstances. And we've got to win. I mean, think about it like this, Alex. Like you said. He's going to be, what, 82 when he wins the election? It's almost like, do you want a guy running the leader of the free world or a hot dog? And it, this is like a big job. I mean, nobody, he should he should know better. Just step down. Trump is only got to this point. younger, Tony. What? 
Trump is only three years younger. And look at yeah, the mess he is. We've yeah, got, you know look, we've, look, we have the, the worst, I, I, I think, and in, in his, our historian here, Josh, would probably agree with this assessment. I think we have the worst two candidates we've I'm ever had running against each other in the history of this country. Yeah, it's not good. I mean, it, it, it's odd because to me, you know, I would consider this the most consequential election since 1864. Since 18 you know, when? Since 1864, you know, when Lincoln was up for re-election mm -hmm. and wasn't going to win. And, you know, the platform was to make peace with the Confederacy, to stop the war. And let the nation be divided, you know? Uh, and some things happened and he got reelected and that's not how, so that's what hung in the balance there. What hung in the balance in 1864 was a, a civil war and how the civil war would be ended. Would it be ended in a negotiated peace where the Confederacy got a lot of what they wanted and it was two separate nations or would it be ended by victory? You know, reuniting. Who ran against Lincoln in that? Well, a couple different people. I mean, you know, John C. Fremont, and I mean, you know, they had some, uh, a, a lot of people that advocated for making peace with the Confederacy, you know, was, was the main opposition platform. People were just ready for the war to end because it had been going on for, you know, four years. So there, I mean, there was a multitude of people, and he wasn't, it wasn't looking good for him, you know, it wasn't looking good at all. So not until the fall when some military events helped turn the tide. But, I mean, I guess my point is, to me, this election is the most consequential since that election. And, I mean, I know there's been a lot of other ones since then, you know, 68 and, you know, you know, you know FDRs and all that. I mean, I, I get it. Uh, I'm just saying that's my opinion because... You know, in this election, our road is basically, maybe we don't get a lot of things fixed, but we keep the country on the path that it's on of, you know, free government and things of that nature. And then, you know, the other way is some of this, you know, retribution and, and fascism and, and just, just, I mean, you know, crap and nonsense, you know. So it's incredibly consequential. So... <laughs> They need to play the best players, you know, and put them on the field, not necessarily the ones that, that think they deserve it or or whatever, you know. I mean, so because this is for everything, you know, it's it's for it's for it's for everything. I mean, listen, I hear, you know, this faith and freedom conference that I saw parts of on on C-SPAN and, and, and things. And I hear these folks up there, the, and these are people close to him, okay? Stephen Miller, I mean, this is a guy that worked in the White House for four years that thinks academics like myself, you know, who maybe have a different philosophy than they do, they're talking about, you know, maybe we should get these people locked up, you know? Which, by the way, is exactly what they did in the Soviet Union and in other places, you know? You've you got to get rid of the academics and send them off to a prison somewhere because these are the people that will go around and tell everybody what we're doing is wrong. You know, I mean, this is the kind of... I don't understand personally why the media doesn't start, and I, well, really, I don't understand why the Biden campaign doesn't start using the word fascism more. I mean, they, yeah. they need to start saying exactly what it is, because that's what it is. I mean, they have documents that lay out what they want to do, and he can distance himself from them all he wants or whatever. I, I don't care. I mean, he's, he's, that's, that's, games. The campaign that's running against him needs to explain to people that's that that's that's their platform. I mean, they need to start using those kinds of words. And if they think all oh, that'll scare people, well, I don't know, then you need to educate people or you need to do something because obviously what you're doing isn't working, you know, because Trump should be losing by 100 points. You know, and in mm -hmm. real case, overall, he's Trump not shouldn't that well even liked. Trump shouldn't even be on the ballot. Right. Okay. I mean, it's ridiculous. It's absolutely ridiculous that anybody uh, would conceive of a person this immoral to be running for president of the United States. I mean, a guy who cheats on his wife. Do you think they anybody like that could have been president in the past? 
Probably. Just just think if Kamala or or Gavin was in that debate, you know, against against Trump. I mean, they would have ripped him up. They would, uh, they would have taken him to lunch. Because Trump to begin with, to begin with uh, the first thing that Biden didn't do was call him on all the lies. They would have yeah. called him on each and every lie. Well, I mean, like I said, they need to say exactly what's happening. They need to say he's either a fascist or he's the puppet of fascists. So he either is one. Or if you think that now, he doesn't really believe in anything, he just believes in himself, that's fine. I wouldn't disagree. Then he's the puppet of fascist. Okay? Mm -hmm. He may not be the leader of a fascist movement, but he is the puppet of one. And they're, they're at a conference, like I said, that I saw on C-SPAN, where they're making no bones about it. I mean, they're not really even hiding anymore what their plans are. You know? Look at Project 2025. I mean, that's exactly what it is. I mean, you know, I mean, they're... I mean, and these are high, these are senators, these are congressmen, these are people that have, you know, Josh Hawley is there today saying, many of you are going to accuse me of saying that I'm fighting for Christian nationalism. Yep, I am. I mean, they're not even <laughs> hiding anymore what they want to do. You know, I mean, this is, this is, I mean, this isn't Facebook memes or anything like that anymore. This is people who are saying, yes. Do we think that it should be illegal to go to the store and buy condoms? Yes, we do. Yes, as a matter of fact, we don't think contraception really should be needed or should be legal. Only a husband hmm. and a wife should have sex. You know, I mean, and this is all kind of people should that never, do religion, they want. Should take saying, you know. religion should never enter into the argument. You well, know, this, never, but it is. ever, under any conditions. Mm -hmm. That's not what these guys believe. That's right. He's I mean, that's... But that's, that's not, not what America true. was founded on. I agree, but they don't they, care about they, that. They don't care about that. Yeah, but their, exactly. you know, their their platform is you know is to do away with this stuff. I mean, you know, I mean it, it's <laughs> it's to it's to abolish the Department of Education so that your local school board can put the Ten Commandments. I mean, there's a guy there today saying, "Why should we put the Ten Commandments up in school? They should just be everywhere." <laughs> Yeah. Our, our platform should be the Ten Commandments. I mean, I'm, I'm <clears throat> holding these people pretty close. You can go well, look at I, them, then, know? then, then I guess where does where does Trump fit into "Thou shalt uh, not commit adultery"? <laughs> he really does it again. That doesn't apply to him. He's got right. immunity. Yeah, so, he, like yeah. I said, you, you know, yeah, he's you got can immunity. Either, <laughs> if, he didn't read that book yet. if you don't consider him a fascist, then he is the puppet of that. I mean, you know, I, I'm saying, you know. I mean, uh, the difference between oh, I think I think he, Mussolini I, believed what he said. I think he know? definitely is a puppet of fascists because I don't think Donald Trump has a single bone in his body that cares about anything but himself. Okay, these guys at least you may not like them, and they may be fascists, but at least they believe in something. They have an ideology they adhere to. Right. He doesn't adhere to any no. ideology. He doesn't know from ideology. He won't even know what it means. Alex, can I ask you a question? Sure. Did they try to kill Ford twice? Yes. Yes. How come nobody can take one shot at this guy? Oh, stop oh, it. Come Why? on. Why would you? I'd be happy. Come on. Let's not get you into that discussion. Happy? Tony, you're going to get the Secret Service pounding on your door. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, I, but, but Trump, I mean, let's really be honest. By the way, really the Secret Service it. wants to come get me for what you just said. I will give them your address, okay? But I mean, really think about it, though. Think about everything that Trump, you heard what he said about the January 6th people. They're prison. He's going to look it out. They killed the cop. Because you got to remember that uh, who, uh, uh, let's see here, Ford, they Ford, they tried to get twice, I think. I think uh, I'm twice, right? Squeaky from. Yeah. Yeah, we squeaky from. And well. then there was the other. Who was the other one? I can't remember yeah. now. Uh, I couldn't believe that. What, he was shot in San Francisco. Was that squeaky from? That from? was squeaky from. Didn't they try to get him from. in New York, too? The other one was in L.A., if I if I oh, remember no. correctly. California hated him. Yeah, well, you know, whatever. <laughs> no, but, there was but nothing Charlie, to hate. I'll tell you with Gerald Ford. There was yeah. nothing really to hate. There was nothing to really admire, but there was nothing to hate. I mean, no. I mean, really, I was going to ask you, was he that hated that they were going to go ahead? I mean, I never understood. He wasn't that. a powerful president, Tony. No, he happened to be the president at the time. Well, yeah. And that puts a, you know. That, but, 
the only reason why I say this is because Trump is the same guy who's going to let these people out of January 6th, which they incited a riot, and what, one or two people got killed, and he's just going to demolish the whole... It, you can't make this up. The guy is no good. Come on. You wouldn't cry a tear over him. Come on. No, I, no, I wouldn't cry a tear over him, but, you know, on the other hand, I, I don't want to see that... Uh, be but the, he wouldn't bring it upon himself. You know what I'm saying? It's almost like, how many cages can you rattle to somebody's I, I, you know what? I, I think you're you're going too far. You can stop now, Tony. Okay. Yeah. Mm. I'll stop it at that, but you know. Talk to your brother. We brother. don't wish that on anybody. You know. Well, I mean, it, it doesn't solve. I don't wish it on him, but he, some people bring it upon so, himself. If you think that that would be the solution to a problem, it's not. The problem well, is all not... All the problems is, he brings is, on is himself. Hold, hold on a second, Tony. Shut up a second. The t trouble, and, and I think Josh will agree with me, and almost everybody will agree with me, the problem doesn't lie with Trump. It lies with the people who vote for Trump. It lies yeah. with a country who has lost its values and its sense of purpose. You know, and you get rid of Donald Trump, and there's somebody just as bad coming up right behind him who people will go and follow because they like the message that Donald Trump had. But you see, I'm not, I'm not trying to say... And also that's Trump will be looked upon as a martyr, by the way. Yes. But what I'm, I'm not saying, that's, I'm not yeah. saying I'm yeah. for this. What I'm trying yeah. to say is, with all the times you guys have criticized Trump, you, you can't sit there and tell me he has not brought this on himself. Well, he hasn't brought with anything his, on with himself. All his reactions, yet, except maybe another. Stop the steal. The yeah. election's no good. Mm. Uh, the, Alan, the January 6th rioting. Alan's got his hand up. Alan. Come on. Um, Sarah Jane Moore attempted to uh, yeah. assassinate President Ford 17 days after he was shot at. Boy, they really didn't like him in California. Mm hmm. Seventeen days earlier. Did did yeah. did, did, uh, did uh, the Squeaky Fromm actually get a shot off? Did either of them get a shot off? And, oh yeah, the the uh, Sarah Jane Moore was a thirty-eight special. I oh okay, it, so. all right. Yeah, thirty-eight yeah. special revolver, both missed. She fired two shots. <laughs> I mean, you know, this is the guy who's got a million. Yeah, he could shoot, shoot somebody in Times Square and he can get away with it. I mean, this is what he's saying. Uh, what? Yeah, well, that's really what the Supreme Court said. I mean, he's got immunity, right? I mean, you bitch, Tony, but he's doing whatever he wants Tony, to. Tony, shut up. Oh, be quiet. You just don't like the truth, Alex. No, it's not a question of the truth. It's a question of that you are talking about something which could get me in a lot of trouble. No, could I'm get not, you, no, wait I'm a not minute, saying let me that's going to happen. Could get you in a lot of trouble, and I'm trying to save you the trouble. Okay. okay. I mean... I, I got you there. You would be best to shut up right now. That's right. We've heard I what you had to you say. Alex. You say, I don't I'm want to hear the first. truth. We've heard whatever your truth is, but that's not right. I didn't just, agree. Just text Alan your, your thoughts. I mean, I might get arrested <laughs> by the federal government. Long. I might get arrested by the federal government over this, or at the very least, demonetized by uh, uh, YouTube. So, you know. Well, I, I did not say anything bad. I just said people yes, you would be did. I did not say people would be broken you, up about. You, you, the way you phrased that you are threatening the life no, of No, no. Yeah. I'm going to drop it. Good. Yeah. Because quite frankly, uh, I would love to, here's what I'd love to see happen to Donald Trump. That and he runs for president the of the United States again and gets his ass beaten. And we never yeah. have to hear from him again. That's what I I'd agree. like to see happen. Yeah, the movement needs to be rejected, you know, politically. You know, it was like I said, he's he's a puppet of a movement. He's not really. I mean, I don't really believe that, you know, Mr. Trump has sat around, you know, 10, 15, 20, last 25 years and thought, you know, the I mean, these this abortion issue and these unborn children and. And, you know, I just can't believe that we have this Department of Education that, that sets these... St I, I don't... He, he doesn't have deep thoughts of policy and, you know, I mean, so... But He's not that smart. He's a, he's a candidate who likes running for these things, and he's gotten himself surrounded with these people. They latched onto him, and, and I, I mean, we talked about this mm -hmm. last week. We did. I mean, they, he's a tool for them to use, and that's it. I mean, you know, they they really don't, in my mind, they really don't like him either. They mm -hmm. just said, 
but we'll take him because he can accomplish things that we want to do, you know, which has been my problem with, you know, Christianity, if you will, for quite some time is, you know, uh, I've never appreciated the church's willingness to use immoral people to accomplish what they thought were moral ends. You know, I, I've always thought that was, was wrong, you know, so, but that's what they're doing. I mean, you know, he's a, he's a, he's a tool that they wield in their movement for things that, you know, they believe in. But the vast majority of these people advocate a fascist system of government. I'm sorry, but that's what it is. You know, when a, when a government system tells you the things that you can and cannot do, and then if you do not agree with them, forces you out or imprisons you or has you, whatever. I mean, that's that's exactly the kind of stuff that they're talking about, you know. I mean, they don't have really, I mean, the, the reason oh, that I label it that it way is because within their movement, they do not have room for dissent. Mm-hmm. You either agree or you are an enemy of this movement. There's no room for dissent within their movement. But here's my, my question. Yeah. What do you think the chances are that America has turned? That in fact, the kind of the beliefs we all held true are no longer being held as truth. You know, I mean, if, if America wants to elect Donald Trump president of the United States, then have we lost America and all it stands for? I mean, that's fair. I, I don't really think it has because the, the popular vote has shown the last several times that more citizens do not like this person than like this person, you know, mm-hmm. and the polling shows uh, and, and not just a poll. I mean, the shit tons of polls for the last several years. And if you want to challenge your accuracy of polling or anything, that's fine. But I'm just saying all the data shows that people still support Biden, even after the debate, basically the same. It's still basically a, a virtual tie, you know, depending on what poll you look at and on what day you look at it and all that, mm-hmm. just like it was at the last election. And there is still still a lot of data that shows that people do not approve of Trump's ideas and behavior in a lot of cases, you know? I mean, mm. you know, he I mean... He uh, hasn't picked... I haven't seen the news the past couple of days. He hasn't picked the vice president, right? Not yet. Not I, I hear David Duke is available. The thing is that, uh, <laughs> that uh, they never used to name the vice presidential candidate till after the person got nominated. And then... Between that oh. day and the next day, he used to announce who his nominee was going to be for oh, okay. vice president. That's mm-hmm. the way. Am I right? Uh, uh, At the convention, yeah. Yeah. Correct. yeah. Most times it's done, you know, mm-hmm. by the convention. So oh, I thought it was done earlier. Okay. The people that are. This whole uh, idea about, oh, he, has, he hasn't nominated. named his guy yet. And he, Biden already has. I mean, that. Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, well, because yeah, she's you know, sitting vice president. president. I mean, right. Although well, it's, it still could have made a change, it used to be an yeah. assumption that the vice president would be the new vice presidential candidate, because under Roosevelt, how many vice presidential candidates were they that ran with him? Yeah, he yeah. changed yeah. multiple yeah. times. Right? Every yeah. time, I think. I, I think Biden would have made a horrible mistake. Yes, replacing the yeah. vice president. Before Truman, yeah. there was Wallace, and before yeah. Wallace, there was somebody else. Charlie, yeah. he's FBI. already worried about yeah. losing the. He's already worried about losing the black vote. Take off Kamala. Oh, my God. Yeah, right. that, do that, yeah. Kamala Kamala women and, women. And, and blacks. Oh, my God. Blacks and women. Just get another white yeah. guy in there with him. That'd be great. I think the only reason why he's it's close is, it, you know, why it's his age. It's really, I mean, she really Look, was. She it's was not thin, even thin. his age. He could be this age and be far more alert and around than he is now. Sure. We saw him in that debate show a moment of great failure mentally, yeah. and that's the thing that's scaring America. And given well, that you hear what Stephanopoulos America's said? frightened of that, 
we should be relieved of his nomination and he should give it up to somebody else. Well, I'm agreeing okay. with you on that. But did you hear what Stephanopoulos said today off camera on yes. the street? Yes. That he, he, uh, the guy he from TMZ, wrong guy to talk to. You know. Yeah. Well, he's had the most interviews with him, so he's probably seen him up close. Hmm? Like, you're more alert than he is, Alex. Hey, hey, listen. Oh, he just, absolutely. They, 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 uh, Alex Bennett for president. They just you're, lost. Uh, they just lost George Clooney. He yeah. said he is not backing uh, Biden at this point. Biden. He wants Biden to quit. I mean, uh, yeah. I, mean I, I don't, is he living in Italy or is he still an American citizen? I don't even know. And it's not, Biden's by the American way, it's not that George Clooney is a kingmaker, but he has a lot of influence in Hollywood. And uh, yep. it, it's a question of people, um, you know, d uh, uh, doing something about it, uh, you know, yeah. so. But, you know, can I throw this out? He, he needs he, he needs a guy like Clooney, because yeah. it's important for him to be able to uh, have that money coming in. He's losing yeah. a lot of donors lately, and that's the other problem. Yeah, yeah jo George Clooney is an American, Tony. He is okay. I know he lives in Italy, most of them. But you didn't think George Clooney was an American? I know he lives in Italy. They said I don't know if he was a citizen there. I know he lives. He, he lives. He has a home in Italy. Yeah, I know he has a has home it. here. He has a home yeah. where he probably a dozen other places. See, right. I'm in the school of thought, guys. I think if Biden steps down, and you get a and you get a man in there, and you keep her as VP, you're going to bury Trump. Then. I you're think. Gonna you, bury I think. Him. I think Kamala Harris can b bury Trump. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, because be, once, it, once I people look opinion, at Kamala Harris's history. It. And she has a very good reputation of being a good, uh, of having been a good district attorney of San Francisco and attorney general yep. of California, and then she also had a pretty good record as a uh, as a senator. Yeah, but here's a bulldog. She's, she's got a great. But here's when, a, once here's that's the presented here. to the American public, I think she's going to have a lot better chance even than Hillary had, who was m incredibly more competent than than. Uh, uh, Kamala is, you know. Well, the only thing I would say is in the primaries, Kamala Harris never finished at the top. That doesn't she was mean always she won't in the now. You know, people given a choice, they're just afraid <laughs> of the choice they've got now. You know, I, I mean, mean, I don't know that I could possible. vote. I look, I'm I'm 84 years old. I should want to vote for the old guy and root for the old guy. I don't think I can vote for him. I really do. I agree with you there. I think I don't. I but, think at you know, this point, who am I going to do? Who am I? Gonna, it's like I said to Charlie the other day when he said, "Well, if he doesn't put up Kamala Harris, he's going to lose the black vote." And I, I said to Charlie, "Charlie, if uh, if he doesn't run Kamala Harris and somebody else like Gavin Newsom, who are you going to vote for? Trump?" <laughs> you know? yeah. But that's me. But I'm just talking about as a group. You, I'm just saying the people, when yeah. given a choice, even if Obama endorses Newsom. You don't think they would follow Obama? Hmm? No, because this is the first time we've really? ever had a black vice president, and you got to pass over her. Yeah, but Charlie, you got to get that out of your head because that's another thing with the Democrats. No, they he doesn't. Do Hillary no. And out of your head. No. And wants that. No, you he doesn't do have to get it out of his head because it's an important fact. Yeah, but Charlie, look at it this way: if she was that strong, she wouldn't have dropped out of the primary. She was finishing at the bottom. You can't deny Hubert that. Humphrey never ran in the primary. But Charlie, he, he, he finished in the bottom of the primary. You, that's that's not good, though. What happened then doesn't necessarily augur for what's going to happen now. That's right. Yeah. But you can't define. You know, I mean, you look, define. between you and me, I would, I would be happy to see Gavin Newsom run. I don't have to agree with you. I would be happy to see Gavin Newsom I run. I black. But he's got problems. I don't, care. I just don't agree with it. I think if Obama, if Obama well, okay, backs the guy, they're going to vote for him. I don't know what black people. No, that's want. your opinion. But I think if Obama okay. backs the I president, mean, the trouble they, with that would mean something. Wait, hold on, hey, you know, Charlie. Tony, I'm not uh, black, and I agree with uh, with. You could agree with him, but it, that's Charlie. your opinion. But I think Obama Tony, has a little Tony, more Tony, it's time for you to and that's your tone opinion. it down a little bit. Yes. We like to get other people talking here. Yep. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'm just saying that Gavin Newsom has his own baggage. Uh, when he, if he ran, people would think that uh, he had problems getting his laundry done because he'd be hearing about the French laundry all the time. Yeah, you know, uh, which is is not a great Damn moment. Damn good in food, his by the way. What? 
They have good food, by the way. They do. I know. I've, I've eaten there. Me too. Yeah. It's very good. Um, Jack in the Box is really good sometimes. Oh, my God. So good. <laughs> Only what? if you have to what pay. What did you say? The Jack in the Box is so good sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. They they have a special uh, two ninety nine for a for a uh, jumbo jack right now. Oh my god! When I'm buzzed, I stop by there on the way home. Oh, so good. Hmm. What I loved about uh, about uh, Jack in the Box was the person, the company that took it over from the original people who who started it was who Purina. Ralston Purina. Yeah, <laughs> they make dog food. Okay. Yeah, and I, I, I wanted to. I kept referring to uh, Jack in the Box on the air as a Purina uh, uh, human chow. <laughs> you know. No sponsors, huh? Uh, the, you know this thing is it, just it, it's a clusterfuck. Okay, let's be honest about it. Uh, yeah, I mean, I... we've got two people who, quite frankly. If you didn't have to vote for him, you wouldn't vote for either one at this point. If you had a younger candidate running for one or the other party, you'd be looking at them a lot closer yeah. than you are to yeah. jo Joe Biden. Okay? I mean, the Republicans are stupid not to run a young person. Okay? Mm -hmm. That would have helped them. But mm -hmm. they're putting all their eggs in that Trump basket, and I think if they lose, uh, this is the last time we're going to hear from the Republican Party for years. You know, um, you change the name. <laughs> what were you gonna say? What did you say, Jeff? They, they could change their ta their name. Yeah, they can call themselves the Hitler followers. Yes. Yeah. 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 But uh, anyway, so you know, um, it, it it's it's just not not good what's happening, and uh, I don't know how we it's solve this fun. problem. I'm sure but, other countries' but, leaders are laughing at us right now. But, you know, how, how true was it? You know, right after the debate, they said, oh, all the Democrats are having a big meeting right now. You know, like they're going to change something. And they're, they're, they're putting this fear into everybody. And it's, I don't it's know. Awful. Well, the, 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 de the Democrats are getting flop sweat over this thing. They yeah. really don't know what to do. And they don't know how to handle it. So they're mm -hmm. clutching their beads and trying to, you know, they're all over the place. I mean, they know it is a problem, and it's got to be yeah. solved. And he did a good job for four years. I mean, look at the Dow. Look at you know. Yeah, no, but he the I last mean, couple of but the last they say the last half a year or something, people around him have noticed a marked difference oh, yeah. in him. Yeah, you know, and that's Jill, the problem. Jill's got to step in and tell him. Doesn't mm -hmm. the wife rule the marriage anyway? So. She should. Well, if she cares about him. But what somebody said what this amounts to now is elder abuse. Yeah. I mean, you he know. did a good job. I he mean. should be encouraged not to run. They should just tell him he won. You know? <laughs> and just break, put him into some house, you know, look like the White House, let him live the rest of his life, and he'll think he's president. And just run somebody else. Oh, by the way, before we go, nobody noticed my beard is gone. Oh, Alex, your tooth, you better be careful with that. I heard you. It's cut. Wait a minute. Here comes Don Giller. Don, we haven't got enough oh time God. for you. Gonna, it's it's not coming at the last minute. Wait a minute. Hold, hold on a second. Let me just do this fast. Play hold, the theme right when he comes on, on please. <laughs> uh, hello, hello. Don? 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 Oh, hey. There we go. Don? Here, here's, yes. the, here's the problem. There's the closing theme. Hey, 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 hey. All right, let, let me be real quick. Yeah. Um, the, the argument about, about the Harris. Yeah. George Herbert Walker Bush bombed out in the 1980 GOP primaries. Reagan then selected him for VP, and he went on to beat the caucus in 88. So the primaries mean nothing. Okay, mm -hmm. listen. That's How many the, thanks, Don? The the that we had none. That's our theme playing. You. You really could have yeah, closed on, on, but I had on. to get you on because that's the kind of guy I am. Okay. <clears throat> hey, thank you, Jeff. I appreciate it. And thank you to Josh okay. as well for being here. Charlie, always good. Always good. And uh, Brian Neary, nice to have you here as always. Alan, nice to have you here. Tony, uh, you're a pain in the ass tonight. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to talk about your tooth. Keep an eye on that, Alex. You'll what? Be 
the infection because I heard you were biting on it. Oh, I don't have an infection. I have a, a blood oh, you get from having bitten on my cheek so much. And Don Giller, thank you for calling our show once again. Better late than never, I think they call. The last seven seconds. This is a test. Anyway, everybody, give seconds. a big wave this goodbye, and I'll give a big wave American goodbye at Network. you, okay? This is there they go, seconds. ladies and gentlemen. That's our... Oh. Why do we call this that? I don't have no idea what that sound is. What? Is anything wrong with that? What is that? no idea what that... Oh, I see. I know what that is. There we go. I have these buttons I push now, and they <laughs> I pushed one of the other buttons at the same time. It's like... Alex Bennett is still alive? See, I can do that. Okay. Anyway, thank you, everybody, for being here. Uh, listen, she's next. Yes, Amy Manuel is next with the... Uh, with the... Uh, uh, inter- uh, what is it? The intersection. Yeah. She'll be here uh, right after us, taking your calls at... Gabnet Live on Skype. In the meantime, I'll see you again tomorrow night. Same time, same station in life. And in the meantime, if you see her, yeah, you know what to do. This is Tell her I love her, okay? For the next 60 seconds. Wait a minute. This Hold on a second. <laughs> I'm never using these buttons again. Okay, I'll see you later, everybody. Thanks. Bye.